Hello, welcome back to the Prairie Knitter Podcast. My name is Dana, and this is my knitting buddy, Odette, or Odie for short. She doesn't knit, but sometimes she gets tangled up in all the yarn. Yeah. All right. So it's been a couple of weeks since I've filmed a podcast, so hopefully I get back into the groove of this. It's been kind of a rough few weeks. I suffer from chronic migraines, and it's just been, I've had about 20 of them in the last 30 days, so it's been intense. There's been some um, rain, stormy weather, and that always affects my migraines. Uh, there was actually one storm we had here where there was a tornado warning, and my partner, he was on his way home uh, from Costco, so he was driving down the highway, and he's like, you gotta get outside, you gotta look at these clouds. So I took some video of the clouds, and I'll put them in at the end of the video for you, but that is why my head has been hurting, and why I haven't been here. So I'm feeling good today, I've got the house to myself, so I figured I would jump on here and update you on my knitting. So first and foremost, we'll start with what I am wearing. <laughs> it is ginormous. So this was about the third sweater I knit last year, um, you know, with my saga of not knitting and then I got back into knitting. So this was the third sweater that I knit. The other two were in like a big chunky yarn. So this was my first like fine weight. So it is the No Frills sweater by Petite Knit. I did not gauge swatch. I followed her instructions on needle size and it ended up ginormous. Apparently I'm a very loose knitter. That's, that's when I discovered I'm a loose knitter. So it is huge. I'm thinking about ripping it out and doing it again, but I don't think that's gonna work very well. I knit this with um, Rowan Kid Silk Haze mohair, which I hear is awful to frog as well as a strand of this 100% cashmere by um, Lilabella. I bought this yarn in Venice, Italy 10 years ago when I was there with my mom. So I could not wind this yarn with a ball winder, with my Swift and ball winders I usually do, because it would just, it kept snapping at any sort of tension, it would snap, it's so fine and so like delicate. So I actually had to pretty much wind it by hand. And it is 770 yards and 50 grams. So it's a lot of yarn. Now the sweater took about two of, of these, so about 100 grams of cashmere. And I've got two more left. So I can actually make another sweater in a smaller size that fits me better using uh, the combo. But uh, I'm just, I'm gonna have to wear this one big. I don't think it's gonna rip out. If, if I couldn't even use a ball winder, I think it's just gonna keep snapping on me. So I don't think I wanna chance it. Anyways, so that's that. Um, I've got this yarn in a couple different colors. I've got it in a, a nice brown, I've got it in an orange and a yellow. So um, I've got some plans for the future, but I'm not looking forward to hand winding it, so. We'll put that on the back burner for now. All right, I finished da, 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 The Snowy Forest. This is by Midori Hirose. This is the first pattern that I followed in a while. I've been making like my own kind of recipe sweaters for, for a while because I just didn't want to think about anything. So I finally sat down and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna follow a pattern and read instructions and do some cables. And the cables were intimidating at first until I got started on it and I realized just how easy they were. Um, for most of it, you just do do this cable pattern like every other row, kind of like you would like if you're doing a raglan. So every other row. And then the big cables were every several rows. So I really didn't have to think until I got to those rows. and then pay attention, look at the chart, and it was quite easy. I'm, I'm quite impressed. And now, after you finish the circular yoke with the cables, 
they switch over to raglan increasing and it's kind of a, a very deep yoke which I'm not sure if I like so much. If I lift up my arms it, it does crawl up quite a bit and shows my midriff. It's also not going to be very comfortable to wear in sweaters so I do want to knit this pattern again but I think I will omit the raglan increases and instead the number of increases in total for the raglan I'll just do in one circular round and then separate for, for sleeves and then just knit the body a little bit longer than I did here. So that's the, the plan for future and if I like that and I find that this is just awkward to wear then I might rip this one back and redo it. I'd have to rip back the body and the sleeves so kind of not looking forward to that but at the same point or at the same time, I really did enjoy knitting with this yarn. This was um, Pasling Knits. She's a Canadian dyer from BC, I think, I think BC, um, in her honey colorway. So it is her 100% baby alpaca sport way, so she calls it sailing sport held with her swimming surrey base, both in the colorway honey. I love this color. I was worried that it would wash me out, but I'm just feeling it. Like it's giving me total fall vibes and I'm over summer and ready to get on with fall. I just wish fall was longer. It's a very short season here in Canada. We kind of go from really hot summer and then short fall and then snow. I don't want snow. I just want the fall. <laughs> you know, the the green leaf, no not green leaves, orange leaves, you know, when the green turns to yellow, when orange and red. I just, I love how that looks. It only lasts about a week or so here though, so you just gotta enjoy it while you can. And I wish we had, you know, two months of fall. I can wear this sweater a lot. So I do have this yarn combination in a few other colors. So I'm thinking, I'm wondering, maybe I'll do another snowy forest in one of those. So I've got here, this is her colorway, same bases. Um, this is her colorway fig. So it's kind of a purpley uh, tonal. This is her colorway Aphrodite. It's kind of like a pink and green variegated but it's very soft and I've seen it knit up with, held with the Surrey and the Surrey, you know, because it's variegated as well, they just kind of blend together and it creates this beautiful all over mar like watercolor effect and it's just really subtle, but mostly pink. And then I've got her Athena base or Athena colorway, which is kind of a tonal green. So those are my options for the same yarn because the Snowy Forest calls for a sport held with a lace weight, like a, a fuzzy lace weight. And these are, sports not easy to come by. Most dyers have fingering weight or they got DK, but not a whole lot have a sport. So this met gauge perfectly. I used a size six needle or US six needle, which the pattern called for a lot bigger, but that's what I needed to get gauge. Always use the needle to get gauge. Do a gauge swatch, trust me, otherwise you'll end up with this. If you want to see what it actually looks like on me standing up, I've got some photos of me wearing uh, this No Frills sweater on my Instagram. So that's at um, the Prairie Knitter. Yeah, at the Prairie Knitter is my Instagram handle. I'll have it in the description below so you can just go check that out. Scroll on back to when I started my knitting content about a year ago. And you'll see just how big this sweater is on me. Um, anyways, so those are my options. They're kind of springy colors, so I don't know if I want to use them now or save them to spring. Maybe do the purple now. It's kind of a summery color. It's August still. Um, but I do, like, dream of this sweater in a burnt orange or, like, a forest green. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that she comes up with these colorways burnt orange forest green and like a fall collection soon so i'm gonna hold hold off on that until we see hopefully holy if you're listening <laughs> i doubt she's listening but I, I i know i did mention it on on my instagram and she saw it so fingers crossed anyways 
Moving on to works in progress. So I signed up for a test net. For any of you who don't know what a test net is, it is a pattern that is about to be released, but not yet. They go through a series of testing where knitters will test out the pattern to make sure there's no errors in it first and make sure, you know, fit size, uh, give feedback on yarn requirements, fit, things like that. Um, so I signed up for one of those. I used to, I did a lot of test knits last year, but not so many this year. So I figured I'd jump back on it. So I signed up for the, it's called the Tula sweater by Knit Susu. No, Sisu? Knit. Oh my gosh, hold on. Knit Sisu. Sorry about that. Tula sweater by Knit Sisu. She puts here Sisu means strength um, in Finnish, and Tula means the wind in Finnish. I like that. <laughs> Anyways, so this is my Tula sweater so far. So I have knit the yoke, and I'm currently working on the body. And then I've got the sleeves to do. Now I'm a little nervous because this sleeve hole is quite big. So I'm wondering how big these sleeves are going to be. They're supposed to be a balloon sleeve, so that might might be fine, that might work. Um, as a stock in it stitch throughout the front and the back, and then this eyelet lace pattern down the sleeves. So I was a bit nervous thinking that my arms might get too cold with the eyelets, so I chose to do it with a surrey held with a fingering weight. Um, the pattern called for a DK, so I, I picked a fingering weight plus a surrey equals the equivalent to, to a DK weight, just so that the surrey can kind of fluff up a bit and fill in the whole gap, so hopefully keep me warm. That's the plan. So for this, I used one of my favorite dyers. Oh, my skin's coming undone which is do, 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 Hidden Pond Yarns. So this is her Dreamy Sock Base. So it's 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. Um, and her colorway is Antique Pink. So it's just a very subtle pinky, like very, very subtle pink. Like it's, it's almost like a pinky champagne. Love it. And I'm holding it with Woolberry Fiber Company in her Sand Castle colorway. So that's, I just think they go so well together. So I'm just chugging away on the body there. I was debating between do I want to knit the sleeves first, then the body because it's eyelet, so I don't have to pay attention to the stitch pattern, and then stocking it for the body, and then back to the sleeves, and I just decided I'm just gonna do the body, because the needles were already on the body when you split for sleeves. And then, if I'm getting, you know, not bored, I wouldn't say bored, you don't get bored with doing these, but like, the opposite of bored. Like, if I want something plain to knit, I can always cast on another project and work the stocking net on that project and kind of switch back and forth. I don't know when the test knit is due. I think it's September, I think. Um, I'll be long, long done by then, though. One thing I do, and, and uh, yeah. see it's all <laughs> scrunched up at the bottom, I knit with a size 16 inch circular needles, so like the circumference of my needles is always 16 inches. So I cast on the neckband with 16 inch circumference. I knit the entire yoke, it gets really, really tight. Um, this is a finer gauge like a, um, that I'm used to knitting, so there was a lot of stitches <laughs> on the needles before um, splitting for sleeves. It was getting pretty um, precocious there. Is that the right word? Curious? Mm. Anyways, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, correct me in the comments. What word do I mean? English is failing me today. 
Um, anyways, so once I slit for the sleeves, got the, the sleeve stitches off the needles, so much easier to go around. And then I knit the sleeves also in 16 inch circumference. Now, because this one has the balloon sleeve, it'll get very small for the cuff. I don't switch my needles. I, I just stretch the stitches <laughs> around the 16 inch cable cord. That's how I knit. I don't know. Uh, I can't be the only one who only uses 16 inch circumference needles. I can't be the only one. One of the reasons, well actually the only reason I knit with a 16 inch is I like the needle length. It's a little bit shorter, like the 24 inch, the 32 inch, and, and upwards the needle itself is actually longer than, than it is. Uh, 16 inch ones are a little bit shorter and I just, they wrap around my hands nicely and I don't have to, you know, I'm not like this, I'm like this. Anyway. It's just a lot more comfortable for my wrists and my hands and uh, I enjoy it more so I just stick with it. I do have the Addy Turbos because I, I use the Addies, Addy Turbos. Um, I do have their interchangeable sets. So I've got the regular length needles and I've got the shorty ones for the 16 inch circumference. So I could put a longer cord on those. My problem with that is though that they only go down to a size US 4. Oftentimes I am knitting on a smaller needle because I'm a loose knitter. Um, I knit, I'm knitting this one. It calls for a size 7 US needle in the pattern to get the gauge. It's a 20.5 20 stitch in 4 inches gauge. Um, so it calls for a size 7. I am using a size US 1. A US one. I don't know what that is in millimeters, but it's a US one needle just to get gauge. And, and I think I'm a little off. I think um, I think I'm a little big. I think I'm at like 19 and a half stitches in four inches. So it's gonna end up a little bit bigger. But I did my swatch. It worked out on my swatch. So I'm just crossing my fingers that overall it works up to the right size. But yeah, so my interchangeable set doesn't go down pass to you as four so when it does I do you and you know I can use those and I do go up um, cord sizes cord lengths and change those up if I, if I need um, but otherwise anything you know, like my most common needle size is a size three so I usually usually knit like all those um, wide neck plain sweaters and the recipe that's my own that I'll, I will I will write up for you um those are I, I do them all in a US 3 I'm probably gonna put a US 6 or 7 in the pattern because it's like a 17 16 stitch gauge so most people will be a lot bigger of a needle but I use a US 3 for that so I can't use my interchangeable set so I'm stuck on a 16 inch cord it works I digress. So while I was knitting that, I had some yarn come in the mail and I just had this itch, like I had to cast on. Uh, so I went looking through Ravelry, trying to get ideas. It is, well, I'll just show you the yarn first. So it is by Fireweed Fiber Co. They are local Winnipeg hand dyers. Oops, there's some fluff on there. Um, local to Winnipeg hand dyers. I saw they had a, a stand at the fiber and farm festival that I went to that I posted about in my last episode. So while I was there um, I saw this yarn and she didn't have enough for sweater quantity so I ordered it and it got delivered last week. So this is for colorway Pinot, yeah Pinot Noir. It is merino, wool superwash merino. So when I did my swatch, I accidentally touched my eyes and they're just like burning. So I do have to use an allergy pill when I knit with this yarn. Story of my life. That's why I knit with a vodka. Don't need an allergy pill for that. Anyways, so searching around on Ravelry, um, trying to see what tweed yarn looks like. I you know, I really want cables, but A, I don't have enough yarn for cables, and B, 
I don't want it to take away from the tweed at all. I, I want to be able to see the cables. So I saw this pattern. It had a really wide um, neckband that kind of, you know, swooped down rather than standing up. It swooped downwards. So it was a free pattern by drops. So I took a look at it, um, see how the neckband was done. There are some increases in the neckband. So I took the idea of the neckband and found my own gauge with it and then figured out, you know, did all that knitting math to figure out all the stitches. So I wrote out the entire pattern with all the stitch counts that I'm going to follow to get to the size that I want. Basically, I figured out the body. You know, I, I got my gauge, figured out how wide I wanted it to be, how many stitches I would need to get there. Then I have kind of, you know, started the neckband, did my increases there so it starts like a circular yoke and then turns into a raglan. So I did all the knitting math for that. I'll cross the fingers, hope it turns out. I'm kind of nervous about this neckband now. I don't know how it's going to lay and whether I'm going to like it or whether I'm just crazy, but this is what it looks like so far. So I've got the neckband done and I've got like three rows into this document. So I started the raglan. All right, um, other words, I'm still working on my Sunweaver shawl. I haven't touched it at all, so I'm not gonna show that because it hasn't changed since, what was that, like episode one, episode two, whenever I showed it, it hasn't, hasn't moved. Um, I'm hoping to get onto it, but I just really haven't been in the mood to, to read charts lately, but we'll see. I do have an urge to cast on a half and half, what is it called, half? Half and half wrap, triangle wrap, half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho. I got yarn for that, came in the mail, and I kind of want to cast that on. It's just a garter stitch with short rows, so that should be pretty, pretty simple. So I do want that for, for this winter to wear, but I gotta get working on that Sunweaver's shawl. Anyways, um, I think that is everything I have for today. And we are at 22 minutes, so I think that's a, about a good time. I've been rambling a little bit for you. <laughs> I apologize. Um, but yeah, so I'll insert some footage of the storm. Just the clouds were out of this world. It looked like a Nightmare Doomsday movie was happening outside in my yard. And so I'll insert some of that footage, and I hope you enjoy it. And we'll talk soon, maybe, uh, probably not next week, because I don't think I'll have much knitting done. I'm very busy working. Um, sorry about the M's. I'm hoping to get on a schedule of every two weeks. Now, once winter hits, my partner's going to be home. He's at the cabin on, on most weekends, but in the wintertime, he'll be home. So it might get a little a little weird. I might have to learn to talk to the camera with someone in the house. <laughs> Awkward. Anyways, um, take care. Say bye to Odie. Hey, Odie, say bye. She got her little tongue out. I don't know if I mentioned this, but she has no teeth. She's uh, 13 years old, going on 14. She'll be 14 at the beginning of September. So she's almost 14 now. Um, so she had all her teeth removed uh, a couple of years ago because she had bad teeth. She's a purebred chihuahua, so she had bad teeth. She had lost the dental work done throughout her life. And, and finally we were like, yep, yeah, no, they just all got to go. So uh, they've all been removed. And, and since then her tongue doesn't stay in her mouth. You'd be surprised how much the teeth <laughs> control the tongue. Like it was going all over the place for, for about a year until she's got control. So she built up that tongue muscle um, so she can lick properly and, and eat her food okay. Um, but it pokes out all the time. I think it's cute. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Take care. Signing off. Thank you.